everyone, this is Carolise. Today we're talking about the business analyst job search. So where do you find jobs right now? Especially right now. That's what we're gonna be talking about. Don't go anywhere, stay to the end. job search right and that in this time that can be a little bit stressful yeah because it's just a bad time right it's a bad time because so many companies are closing down there's a lot of b2c companies direct-to-consumer companies like macy's and all these other big companies that are closing some of their stores um, and even though you might work in an environment where it's business to business not business to consumer the fact that the business to consumer is having a problem, then the business to business will also have a problem eventually. So it's not a good sign. <laughs> it's not a good sign. But don't give up hope. Don't give up hope because there's still a lot of companies that are making a profit in this time. There's still a lot of companies that are hiring. Like if, for example, if you work for a company that does video conferencing, right? Not even just Zoom, but any video conferencing, you're making money right now because everybody is doing it via online means, right? So that's one thing. If you're into a company that does plexiglass, right? because of the pandemic now, every store in Georgia has the plexiglass to separate the, cus the customer from the cashier. So plexiglass has become like very much high in demand. So there are just some companies that are making a whopping profit in this time so don't be too discouraged to go out there and still do your application still send in your resume still be hunting down that job because you will get it and it's not about the person who um is the smartest or has the most experience sometimes it's just the person who shows up so show up with your resume and keep at it okay so let's talk some more about the business analyst job search. So I have my handy whiteboard here and I've already written the title. I really like my whiteboard. I have got some new um, markers because when I'm writing, it just feels like ideas are flowing and it just feels cool. So I like my whiteboard. I also ordered the, the standing one from Amazon and that should be coming in a few days. Um, so that should be cool. You know guys, sometimes I put things in my Amazon cart and I just don't click the button to like check out. It's not about money, it's not about being, you know, reserved or anything that wants to spend money. It's just like, I spend so much time researching every single thing that I'm buying, like just normal things. I have to read all the reviews, I have to go look at all the sites to see if the price is the best, I have to make sure that it looks good in my decor. Like, I'm buying a lot of home renovation things these days and like tiles and stuff and I have to be like, researching it so I've, I've gotten in the habit of when once i've done my research and i like something i put it in the cart but then i don't click on check out right away i have to go back and review it again and make sure that i really like it and there's nothing better out there <laughs> it's it's crazy like for the whiteboard i was thinking about getting a bigger one but then i'm like i want one that i can move around right not one that i have to put on the wall and if i have to put holes in my wall and i have to move it it's gonna be you know Stressful. So all of these things go into my shopping. Anyway, back to the business analyst job search. <laughs> and I'm going down this tangent and you don't want to go down with me. Alright, so where do you find jobs? Obviously, you need to go to LinkedIn, right? So LinkedIn is one of the main places that people are looking for jobs these days. Companies are advertising on LinkedIn. And also you can, I talked about this in my other videos, so go check out my video on um, how to land your first business analyst job. I'm gonna put the link right here. And I also have other videos from uh, how to start in the business analyst field, like without no experience. So I think the, the, the video is called how to break into business analysis with no experience. And you can see that video here. Please go check those out to give you all the tips, especially if you don't have, um, a business analyst 
experience background, right? But LinkedIn is great because you can find jobs there and you can also find recruiters. I talked about that in the video where you can put a setting on your LinkedIn to say that you are open for jobs without letting your coworkers know that, right? So your boss doesn't have to see that you're looking for a job, but recruiters can see. And that helps you to still keep some privacy about what you're doing, but at the same time get the, the feedback or get approached by, you know, recruiters. The other thing too is that you actively go look for recruiters. So if you're into business analysis and you can see a recruiter who's into IT or into product management or something like that, you could reach out to them, connect with them and see if they're advertising any jobs there that you could benefit from. So don't just wait for them to come to you. Obviously you can go and find them as well. So the good thing about this is being able to find recruiters and being able to do your job search from LinkedIn. Something else I've seen people do on LinkedIn is that they will actually tell their connections that they're looking for a job. So I've seen a few people make a post to say, hey, you know, I'm still in the job market, I'm looking for a job in such and such a field, I have this amount of experience, and if anybody knows of any job in this area, please contact me. Something like that, and I've seen people post that and it's like thousands of comments of people just giving them encouragement and giving them links to different places and stuff like that. So. I've never done it because, I don't know, I feel a little bit weird about approaching total strangers about the job, but it works though. It works. I've just never had the need to do it, but it works because I see people respond with links to companies' websites for jobs that you probably wouldn't have otherwise known. So pride aside, if you need a job, you need a job. Just do what you need to do, and I've seen people do that. So I think. If you're up to it, you can do that as well. The other thing too is to remember to network, right? So you can network on LinkedIn, but it's so impersonal, right? You're literally finding strangers and asking them to connect with you and stuff like that. That's great. But if you know someone who knows someone, we are, I don't know, in my community growing up in Jamaica, we all kind of know people. And so your mother might work for somebody who works for somebody in this company and they might just put in a good word for you or something like that. Nepotism. Nepotize. Hey, that's, that's the point of having friends, right? They should help you when you need help. So if you know someone who knows someone, leverage that connection and just say, hey, I'm looking for a job in this area. Here's my resume or I can send you my resume via email if you know of anything that we know. People have been doing this for a long time and I'm sure that you've, been, you've heard about this in that rocket science. So yeah, don't be too too proud to network with people you know face to face because when you talk to someone about something you give a bigger impression sometimes we like to do things online only because it's so impersonal but yeah put your face out there talk open your mouth and say something to someone about the job that you're looking for and you might find it right so that's the networking in person put in person right here um, as much as you can now because obviously we can't meet people as much and there's distancing and all that stuff to a certain extent in some places. Georgia is very open, <laughs> I'll just say that. That in Georgia, people are just very, very free and they're not doing a lot of the things that other places are doing in terms of the pandemic. So yeah, that's what's going on in Georgia. All right, so LinkedIn, uh, networking, um, of course, job boards. Sure you can see that job boards. Oh man, that was that wasn't written very well. Let me do it better. Okay, that's better. So job board. So the job board is really just whatever board you can find a job on. Like popular ones are like Indeed. I like Indeed because you can upload your resume and you don't have to keep uploading every time you apply. You upload your resume and then they even tell you about jobs and stuff like that. ZipRecruiter is another one. That's a kind of a newer one, but I like it too. Um, Glassdoor, that's also good. What I like about Glassdoor is that they'll tell you salary information that you don't get from other places. And they'll give you surveys, like people can go on a company on the Glassdoor and make a review. And sometimes the reviews are very telling. Like people review the CEO and the management team and sometimes it's going to 
disgruntled employees who have left the company go back and like trash everybody <laughs> right so it's interesting to read up on the company you're applying for to see what the dynamic is and what do people think about them and you know what's 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 the lay of the land to find that out so glassdoor is very good for that i, I mean there's so much there's career builder there is just so many um job boards that you can find jobs on now i will say that sometimes people have advertised jobs and you have to be very careful sometimes when you're searching for a job because you are in i would say more of a desperate position because you want this job right you need this money you need this career you need, you need to move ahead with your life and so you want the job to do that but be very careful of scammers because sometimes people jobs on these job boards and it's nothing but a phishing scam where they tell you they have this great job and it's you know it has all these benefits and all this stuff and you give them your resume and it has all of your information and then they want your social security number they get that so now they now they know where you live where you've worked your name um your social security number they know everything because you in good faith thought that you were applying for a job but they being evil <laughs> scammers are just collecting your information to put it on the dark web so be very careful be very conscious when people start asking you for too much information too soon like if you haven't had an interview and they want your social security number like no no don't do it so you can tell um when people are just fishing and there's some of them that are very sophisticated and they have all these elaborate hoops and jumping through all these things and there's nothing at the end of it more than you giving away your information and sometimes your money because sometimes people say oh you have to pay for the laptop we're going to send you a laptop to do the job but you have to pay for it like some nonsense that like once you start having your spidey senses tingle and you start feeling like this doesn't feel right just cut it off just just be done and i would encourage you not to give away too much really really personally identifiable information such as your social security you know don't give away too much information up front because this is obviously not a legit job if they want all this information day one right i am very careful about that because scamming is not cool right so be very careful and make sure that in, in your attempt to get a job you don't end up being scammed so these are the places that you find jobs another place that is easily overlooked is twitter so people overlook Twitter a lot because, you know, it, it feels like a place where, I don't know, for me, Twitter just has so much politics. <laughs> you know what I mean? People like I don't know and probably will never meet in my life. Just too much. It's very political, you know, and there's just like a horde of people on different topics. But it's a great place to find a job because you just need to go in there and type in business analyst job and you'll see a lot of options show up. Of course, I think you can filter by the location, I'm not sure, but you could just scan through and see if there's anything in your area that, you know, pique your fancy and you can apply that way because it's easier for companies to advertise via Twitter if they have a job opening because the other job boards, they cost more money and LinkedIn costs money. So if they just want to just let it out there, it might be easier for them to just put a link to their, um, their website where they have a job application and they will do that in conjunction with other places that they put a job. So yeah, it's, it's a good place to find jobs as well. So yeah, there are others, of course, this is not intended to be an exhaustive list, obviously. I mean, you could go here and just see other social media groups, right? Like Facebook groups. Um, I've seen where people post that they're looking for a job in Facebook groups, or you find that recruiters or companies will post into the group to say, hey, we're looking um, for a person that matches these, you know, these qualifications and stuff like that. So there's another place that you can find jobs. I've also found that certain, um, not mentorship, but like certain groups, like training, for training locations, they have jobs posted from employees. Like I had a friend who worked with um, General Assembly, which is a place in Atlanta that does UX design and so companies would go to them directly and say hey we need a UX designer can you recommend someone so I don't know if we have any equivalence in business analysis it probably would be the IIBA so if you go to the IIBA chapter in your area they could have companies that go
go to them directly looking for business analysts and so you could be suggesting or you could get a job that way or they could have a meeting where they have companies come and explain um, you know what they're looking for before the, the pandemic there used to be job fairs where different companies would come and they have this big activity at some hotel or something everybody comes with their their resumes and it's like a lot of people talking to different companies it's like a big conference but I don't find that these fairs for me personally I've never had results from them it's like a lot of people and your resume gets lost in the crowd and it just never normally turns out to be useful it's great to see the different companies but like it didn't actually result in any hires at least in my experience um, obviously maybe there are other people who have been to job fairs and have had results from there if you have leave a comment below let me know what happened when you went to a job fair if you were called if anybody ever reached out to you um, I've never had a good experience with it so I gave up on it I just felt like it was too much competition too much people too much noise too much crowds <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever get back to that because of the pandemic, but um, I that's another way you can get a job, but I've just never had personal experience or known anyone who actually got a job from a job fair. All right, so one more thing I wanna tell you is that if you're looking for a job as a BA, also look for a job as a product owner. And this is because a lot of the time if you're working as a functional BA, the jobs or the things that you'll be doing might be very similar to what a product owner is doing in some companies. So you want to make sure that you're covering both as you're looking for a job so that you can, you can apply for both, right? The other thing I want to say quickly is to know your limits. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Know your limits just means that you know what's a no go for you. Like this is what this is your limit. This is what you will do, and anything outside of this you're not gonna do. Not to say you're gonna be very strict and not flexible because you're looking for a job. So you gotta like you can't have too many rules. But at the same time, you have to know what's what's your limit. What's the things that you're not gonna accept because it's just gonna make you miserable. And if you take the job with these conditions, you're not gonna last long. You're not going to give value to the organization. You're probably going to be very miserable. So save yourself all the stress. So for me, my limit is extensive travel, right? I don't mind if I have to go to a client site once in a while, but there are some jobs that might advertise and say 75% travel. That could not work for me because I have a five year old and I don't want to be jumping on planes, hopping all over the country um, at random times a year. So. I know that too much travel is a no-no. It's not gonna work. The other thing for me I know is that, you know, I can't be commute. Now it's not a problem because we are all working from home. Sorry, not communicate, commute. <laughs> so yeah, so this is not a problem anymore, but having a lot of a lot of travel time on the road, that was a no-no for me. Like I had coworkers that were like two hours in one direction every single day. So they spent four hours just coming to work and going back home. That's not gonna work for me. Like I, I just can't do it. I'm not gonna do it. So <laughs> I know for a fact, if this, if this job is too far, I, I'm done. Like my limit is an hour. I will do an hour, but not very happy doing an hour. But I'll do it. But if I have to go two hours to get to the work, to the job, not gonna work. Now that we have working from home, and that might become a more staple among corporate, um, you know, corporate American other places, this might go away. This might not be an issue anymore, you know. But that that was a part of my limit. Um, also, obviously, your salary limit. So your salary range. So you know that if you're not getting paid a certain amount of money. You don't even look at it. So a lot of recruiters, they'll, they'll ask you up front how much you expect to get paid. And I really hate that. I think it's very disingenuous because you know what you're offering. And you know your limit of what you want to pay me. So why are you asking me to kind of trap me to pay so that I can say something and then next thing you know, the, the rest of the organization is getting paid more than me. I feel like it's a very disingenuous question. And, you know, I, I, think, I think recruiters should really stop doing that. Just stop. If you're a recruiter listening to this, stop doing that because it's annoying. 
right? Just tell me what the job is about. Tell me how much it's gonna pay and let me decide if I wanna do it or not. So we don't waste each other's time, right? So sometimes they don't wanna reveal what the salary is because you could have several people applying for the job and they don't wanna say, okay, you got the job, they know exactly how much you got paid. People are very protective of how much they get paid and I understand that. So it could be later on in the process that you find out what the, what the salary is, but it can't be too far down the road, right? It may not be the first conversation, but I can't be going through all these hoops and then I realize it's not even worth my time. So as early as you can reveal the salary, please do so, recruiters, because nobody wants to be running around hopping, scotching, and wondering what the, what the limit for you is. Just tell me what your limit is and I'll tell you how much I'll get paid. In that video that I talk about, I have a video on this. I'm going to put the link right here. Go check it out. Um, I said that when they ask you about your salary, give them a range because you know what your range is, right? Give them a range. But it'd be very nice if they give you the range anyway, knowing that you're going to pick the upper limit. <laughs> we all do it. But, you know, if I am offering a job that's way below my standard, I'm not even going to be wasting my time talking to this person. So just out of respect for both of us let's just get the, the salary out of the way so salary is part of your limits your travel might be part of your limit um technology or tools software tools so for example if the person if the company is looking for a business analyst that does that works specifically with i don't know workday software or salesforce and you feel like you don't have that much salesforce knowledge, yes, you can learn, but if they want you to become like an expert out the gate, like they want an expert in this tool, um, and that's a part of the whole job description, maybe it won't work for you. Because if, if, if the job says Salesforce business analyst, and you go in there and you're like, I don't really know Salesforce, I'm just a novice at it, I'm willing to learn. Maybe they'll still let you continue, right? Maybe they will, but there might be some barriers there. Somebody else could come in with a bigger um, experience on this tool and get it. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't apply if you don't have the expertise in a certain tool, but you have to look at the job description. If it has in the requirement section to say, oh, you have worked with Salesforce in two years, you have two years experience in Salesforce, maybe you could wing it. But if, if the title says, Salesforce business analyst, and you need an expert to do, I don't know, Salesforce Apex um, rules, and they need to help the developer create workflows, like really in-depth things that you don't know off the bat, you could still apply, but I, I think you'd be probably not as successful. Does that make sense? Yeah, so sometimes the tools can be a deterrent, but not to say you will look at the tools first and be like, oh, I don't know this, I'm not going to apply. It's a very fine line. Let me say it again. Sometimes you can ignore the tools and sometimes the tool is going to be your limit. I, I don't know what else to tell you. That's just how it is. Um, so these are the things that you should know, like how, how do you feel about these things? There may be others. I'm not trying to say that this is an exhaustive list or anything like that. But when you're looking for a job, it's a very stressful thing, you know? You're trying to find a job and you're probably in a position where you need the money and it's rough, it's really rough, but I can encourage you that it takes time. Sometimes finding a new job takes six months. So you have to keep at it. And I would suggest that you have at least 10 applications per week. Some people say like five a day, <laughs> you know what I mean? 10 is being very, very reserved. 10 applications per week is very, very conservative. So if you can get more than that, if you can do more than that, that's great. But keep applying. If you don't apply, you won't get a job. So keep applying, keep following all the things that I talked about in this video, and you will get a job, God willing, right? So um, just, just keep the faith. It's rough, especially right now, but there are companies that are hiring, and you can be successful and get a job as a business in this time because others have done it. So you can be successful and get a job as a business analyst in this time. It's, it's a little hard because of what's going on, but people are hiring and people are getting jobs. So you can too. Just want to give you that word of encouragement and for you to know that 
Just keep at it, keep applying, keep going to the interviews. Every time you go to an interview and you don't get the job, you just learn something. You practice something. You practice how to do interviews so you get better and better every single time. And you know what? Maybe that company wasn't for you. Maybe that company wasn't for you and your company that you're going to be happy in is waiting for you. It's out there. Okay, you can do it. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Please like and please subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.